now as the government prepares to announce a series of measures to protect against radicalisation. Prime Minister David Cameron has said he will give his backing to public authorities that put in place proper and sensible rules to ban women from wearing face veils. But what do you think? Well, here now are their thoughts. The TV presenter Sarah Khan and journalist Lauren Booth. Welcome both. Uh, this is what the Prime Minister said. I think in our country people should be free to wear what they like. What does matter if, for instance, a school has a particular uniform policy or when coming into contact with an institution or you're in court, if you need to be able to see someone's face at the border, then I will always back the authority and the institution that have put that in proper place with sensible rules. And you agree? I absolutely agree. I think as a feminist, as um, a human rights um, activist, um, and also just as a woman, I think that these are sensible measures that most people in this country will welcome. The one if thing you, you missed out of that list there was as a Muslim. And, uh, and as a Muslim, absolutely. But, you know, I think... You know, if you work in a school, at a border agency, in a bank, or, you know, wherever you need to sh be somebody show their identification, I think it is absolutely clear guidance to those people to say, you can see somebody's face, you are given authority to say, I'd like to see your face for identification purposes. And those people that work in those institutions now have clear guidance without feeling scared, without feeling, oh my goodness, I'm a racist, and also without feeling that they've actually insulted somebody's religion. Because covering your face in Islam is not a requirement. This is a cultural thing that has been but forced onto women. Can I just ask you then, as a human rights activist, you would understand that it is somebody's right to choose to wear the full face veil, then, wouldn't you? Absolutely, and this is not what the Prime Minister is saying. The Prime Minister is saying is that if you are required in this country to, to show your face, you are obliged to, because other people have to, for security measures, for whatever reason, for identification. Look, we're living in a country where terrorism and extremism is a real threat and we have to be accountable for that and we have to take measures to make sure that we can screen people and people show their faces. Lauren, is it right mm. to link, because we made a very quick link yeah. there between the choice of wearing a full face veil and terrorism. It happened quite fast. That's exactly debate. it. We just jumped from one thing to the other. One thing that seems very rational, which is the right of agencies to know who's coming into the country. And it's perfectly uh, legitimate that at borders, a woman goes into, we, we're Muslims, we're used to being searched at borders. So uh, you go into a room and you show your face and they say it matches this and you can come in and it doesn't have to be a public thing. What's wrong with that? In the legal system, you can go and be met by a lawyer or a jurist or head of the jury and you can show who you are. And that that's okay. What, and then suddenly we make this strange link to that's going to help end extremism. Now, it is this false uh, parallel of this conveyor belt from uh, practicing your faith and being modest to extremism that people really in our community, and myself as a and Muslim and a woman, I take umbrage to this. And is that because we just don't know enough? Is that because we're not talking about it? Because we don't know enough about the faith and what it actually means and this and the other, that we're fearful of it and it's that fear that then makes people jump to these conclusions? I actually think it's more than that. I think it's the language of government currently and I think it's the supported language in the media as well. So if you have David Cameron, for example, let's look at an option where he says, we want to teach all Muslim women English. Great stuff. Who could possibly disagree with that? Get all the women who, who want who, to be a part of society, to be able to do homework with their kids. But then to say, in order that they're going to be deported if they don't do it. So what you're talking about is breaking up communities. So if, uh, Sarah, if you can't... We've, come, we've jumped. We'll come back to, the, to our original debate in a second. But I do want to pick, pick up on that one. And that's, uh, this is this proposal that if you uh, can't speak English after a period of time, then there is no guarantee that your visa would be renewed. In which case, if you can't speak English, we'll send you back. Well, can I just be very clear on that? Because I've looked into this, and there are no plans to remove people who fail to reach a required level, or their language skills are taken into account when renewing somebody's visa. Look, Look, I come from a family that came to this country who couldn't speak a word of English. My dad could speak some, my mum couldn't. And because my mum learnt la the language, it enabled her to connect with me as, somebody, as a child going to that school. She could come to parents' evenings, she could come to the cinema with us, she could read as a bedtime story. And this is, this is basically about saying, look, this is about integration, and there are pockets of our country where we are not integrating. So should Bradford, it be a requirement Derby. that you can speak 
English. I think, as, I think for any woman out there, it is about empowering yourself to be educated so and that to know that's to a English. Yes, yes if it you, is. If you don't speak English, will you will send you back? No, when I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's not what I'm saying. That's what the government is saying. That if you don't, you know, if you do not speak a certain level mm. of English, your visa about, will probably may, may not be renewed. It may be. It's not clear. What about that. all the Brits around the world who live in Spain, live in Portugal, live in France, much further flung places who can't sp speak their local language? I'm not. I don't. I have no recommendation on that. I'm talking about having been brought up in a country where pockets of this pockets of people in this country do not speak English that doesn't better their life and just coming back on the extremism I didn't make a link between face you know covering your face and extremism I said basically because we live under the fear of extremism and terrorism we need everybody in society whether you're in a balaclava or a hoodie you need to be made accountable for who you are for identification purposes if you are going into a public building and nobody can see your face that is a problem for security services on, and the security yeah. services in this country have have absolutely okay. Okay. stopped a lot of terrorism acts going on, okay. on, on. <laughs>